today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, Lakeside, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Amen. Yeah. We have a special treat for you from the worship team. We have just the ladies this morning going to be leading with just the guys on the instruments. We'll but, try. We'll try. So it's going to be an all-female worship this morning, uh, just, just for the moms. Happy Mother's Day. So would you please stand as we begin worship? troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea. Lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the dark. Oh 
Good morning. Feliz Dia de las Madres. Right? Happy Mother's Day. And the, and the reason why I say that is um, I, I came to uh, find out the last couple of weeks that uh, we've got a couple of people from the island of Cuba listening to our service this morning. So uh, they might be oppressed, but the Lord still has a way of getting his message through. So... Chouts to Maruca and, and all of those folks listening online this morning. Um, it's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day. It's, it's Mother's Day, and, and uh, we just want to acknowledge you and thank you, moms, for all that you do and the examples you set for many of us. Many of us, uh, our moms have gone on to be with the Lord. And my prayer this morning was uh, for Jesus just to tell her a quick hello for me and, and just say, I'll see you soon, and thank you for all of the times that she spent with me. And for those that are here, don't ever miss the opportunity to tell your mom, I love you. Because you never know, you never know when the Lord's gonna take her home. So enjoy those moments. Um, the, uh, thank a mom who inspires you. Moms encourage comfort, they guide, and they challenge us. They listen with compassion, speak with wisdom, and lead with love. And today is a perfect day, and, and like every day should be Mom's Day, and we get to appreciate what they do for us. But today is that special day, so take the time uh, to do that and make sure that you encourage them. We, we had some wonderful time over at Rooted this morning, sharing some stories, crying, laughing about our moms. So a uh, great example, and I'm not going to read that verse. You can, you can look, at, look at Proverbs uh, 31, right, Ed? Proverbs 31, the description of a mom. And uh, that will definitely bring tears to your eyes. So I uh, just want to welcome you this morning once again. Uh, and uh, make sure that uh, just a couple of announcements. Coffee Talk, no Carol, is not in your house. <laughs> it's going to be here in the church. I always mess up. I'm messing with it because I always said it's going to be at her house. So uh, it is not. It will be uh, Monday, uh, Ma May 10th at 6.30 p.m. And also, we got a lot of great stuff going on next Sunday. The Gibbs family will be here with us. And uh, what a wonderful time that we get to listen through their testimony message through music. Awesome. There will be lunch 
provided after that. So just uh, bring a side dish and a dessert. Uh, the dessert, please make sure you put it on the table. It says Pedro on it. And I will make sure that I will distribute that, okay? Uh, there are also going to be baptism. Also, what a great day of celebration. Uh, a day in which some folks want to be identified with Jesus Christ and, and just says, I'm one of his followers. So come and join us on that wonderful time. And also, as you, meet, as you go out the doors today or when you came in, you, you saw some baby bottles. That is not for feeding, right? So that is for CareNet, our partners. They have a great ministry. That is to be filled with some of the loose change that we have around the house, and we all have plenty of that. So uh, make sure that you participate, be part of that as we continue to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. With that said, let us all stand and, and greet one another in the name of Christ. As we're finding our way back, would you guys please stand and, uh, as we continue worshiping?
there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sing that again. Oh, there's nothing, nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing. much you can be seated please it's good to worship together amen 
Thank you, ladies. We can worship him with our praise. And as we move into our time of tithes and offerings, that's really an extension of our worship, is it not? We can worship him with our praise. We can worship him with our treasures. Um, we can worship him with our time and our talents. And I had a quick request. There's ways to volunteer here at Lakeside. Tech booth, if you have some time and some talent, or they'll train you, they're looking for some volunteers. I want to share something with you this morning that came across my desk, so to speak. And I'll just read that to you this morning. It begins by borrowing half a phrase from Shakespeare. It says, now is the winter of our discontent. Our worrisome winter follows several other seasons of discontent for us stretching back into early 2020. Put bluntly, the past couple years have been the most disorienting period many of us have ever experienced. And it continues yet today, does it not? But times of turmoil are nothing new. A survey of human history, and certainly the history of the church, shows that eras of upheaval are not so much the exception as the rule. And yet, undergirded by God's grace, the Lord's people have persevered. Centuries before a World War II era, British motivational poster urged citizens to, quote, keep calm and carry on. Faithful believers learned to do just that. They trusted that the sovereign God of the universe was for them and not against them, Romans 8, and that he would see them through. You and I, we ought to live with that kind of unshakable confidence. Yes, these are disorienting days, and there is no guarantee that the year ahead will be less disorienting. But through it all, we can keep calm and carry on, not paralyzed by fear or anxiety, but busy about the Master's work. How? By embracing an eternal perspective not a temporal one. A person with an eternal perspective seeks, quote, the kingdom of God above all else, Matthew 6. He has taken to heart the biblical instruction to, quote, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, Hebrews 13. A person with this kind of perspective is, quote, generous on every occasion, 2 Corinthians 9. An eternal perspective fosters faithful stewardship. A trustworthy steward acknowledges that God is the owner of everything, 1 Chronicles 29. He recognizes that the Lord has called each of us to manage his resources for his purposes. It is our hope and prayer that in the year ahead, we will be wise, a wise and faithful steward, one who, quote, honors the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce, Proverbs 3, 9. And no matter what may happen the rest of this year and the years to come, we pray we can hold fast to the promise that, quote, neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you for those promises and help us to embrace and live out that eternal perspective that you are for us, you are not against us, you will carry us through. Help us to lay down our fears and anxieties and pick up your peace and your joy. And help us to live generous lives. In Jesus' name.
say take one and then smack it down. Action. What does your mom talk about a lot? Mostly stuff that I cannot question and I don't know about. Reading. She's trying to get me into reading. I just don't get it. Taxes. She doesn't talk about stuff. She always sings. She always sings about Beyonce. What's something your mom's always telling you? Stop talking about the iPad. No <laughs> iPad. Go brush your teeth. How does she know you didn't brush your teeth? <laughs> she just knows. I can't. You can't remember? Oh. No, I, I can't. Oh, that's okay. Clean my room. Is your room get kind of dirty? Kind of. Kind of? Kind of. Would your mom say it's kind of dirty, or would your mom say, this is dirty? Kind of. Are you getting tired of my questions? Kind of. Kind of. Does she sing, like, worship music? It's only my dad who sings worship music. So your dad sings worship music, and your mom sings Beyonce? Yeah. If your mom was a superhero, what would her superpowers be? Fast, so she could just get the laundry done, because we always have so much laundry. So much laundry. Why would she need super speed, you think? So she wouldn't be late anymore. So? <laughs> Making people's ear hurt? Because how loud she sings. She'd just go, Wah! and it would just stop the crime. What does she do at work? She looks at people, or? She looks at people? Well. That kind of sounds like Facebook. <laughs> no. Usually it's just messaging. Just messaging, just more, messaging. more, more, messaging. more and more messages, <laughs> just constantly. So, how does your mom know that you love her? I tell her that. You tell her that. Yeah. Do you guys say it at the same time, like you just did then? Or no? <laughs> no. Um, I give her hugs. We we play outside and we ride our scooters and bike. How do you know that mom loves you? She does kind of stuff. Yeah. For me, she does my hair pretty, and and she always always sings to me. She cooks really good chicken, spaghetti. She gives us hugs. Mom hugs are the best, aren't they? She says, "You know what?" And I say, "You love me." And she's like, "How do you know that?" Cause I, cause you always say it. Yeah, she always says it cause she loves me. She's kind for me and my brother. She's gone to her whole family. Why is your mom the best mom in the world, do you think? The only reason is because it's my mom. You love her just because she's mom? Mm hmm I love that. Awesome. Do you have any questions about my mom? Nope. Not interested at all in my, about my mom? Nope. Okay. Fair enough. Good job. If you are a mom, would you please stand in the house? All moms, please. Put you on the spot. Let's give it up. Give me some house lights. Stay standing. I want to see the ladies. House lights. Yeah, house lights. There we go. Thank you. There, yeah, stay up. We, you were in the dark before. Good to see you, ladies. It's your day. Thank you so much for, for being a mom and rising to that high and holy calling. Um, on your way out. For the moms, we have a flower for you to take, because I don't know if, if hubby came through or not, but no. Uh, but we also have some chocolate, so that's just a little saying, hey, moms, we appreciate you and we love you. It's our privilege this morning to have Rebecca coming up. Miss Becky, come on up, share a little bit. Uh, one of our moms. When you're done, just drop it like that. Okay, can you all hear me okay? Yeah. All right, um, so a couple things. I wanted to talk, share a little bit from the recent women's retreat here um, at Lakeside, which was fabulous. And thank you to all of the hardworking ladies that made food and made beautiful table decorations, like most gorgeous table decorations I've ever seen. Um, so one thing that we learned about is that God wants to make us women whose faith is not based on feelings, but whose feelings are based on faith. So our circumstances may change, you know, day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, um, but just um, remembering the constant of, of who our Savior is and that he is good and that he doesn't change regardless of what's going on in our lives. 
Um, so we, we, were, we focused on a feeling that we were currently struggling with, and we wrote that on a stone, and we came and laid it at the foot of the cross here in the sanctuary um, to symbolize laying that at Jesus' feet. And I just thought that was really powerful. Um, I also just wanted to share a quick little thing for Mother's Day. Um, so, so being a mother can be difficult, and there are times where you question, you know, if you're doing a good enough job or not. Um, and my favorite moments are when God sends me a reminder that I'm, I'm never in this alone. Um, so a few weeks ago at church, we were singing, Who Can Stop the Lord Almighty? And without missing a beat, my five-year-old son Dalton leans over and whispers excitedly to me. He says, Mommy, the answer is no one. And um, that just really warmed my heart. So I'm just praying for lots of heartwarming moments for you today. And if you're in a difficult season of motherhood or if, you know, you're um, dealing with a Mother's Day without your mother or just going through, through some challenges that Mother's Day might make more difficult, um, I just want you to know that you're in my thoughts and prayers today. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody. If you are a guest this morning, thank you, seriously, for coming and worshiping with us. Uh, maybe you, uh, your mom invited you, and we're just honored that you would come and share Sunday morning with us. Um, we'd, if you have something on your heart, Connection cards are for that. You can shoot a basket in that little uh, envelope mailbox thing at the welcome table if something's on your heart you'd like us to be praying for you about. Um, Terry Alderton, good to see you. Good to see you, Maria. <laughs> Terry's having have some, uh, some surgery coming up in June, so we've been praying with you. It's good to see you, my friend, and, and your better half as well, Miss Maria. Um, yep. Yeah. Next Sunday is the Gibbs, and they are very gifted, a lot of fun. They sing a kind of a wide variety. When we first met them, they've been coming to Lakeside for over two decades. Not every year. Sometimes it skip a little bit here and there, but um, here's what you need to know in addition to that, in addition to baptism, is everything works out. We're hoping and praying that Scott's able to do this chicken. Look, Lakeside was built, and part of the ingredients of that, apart from the Lord's blessing, on inspiration, perspiration, and Scott's chicken. Bar none. Uh, he is a good friend. He was here day one in 1996, and uh, his dad has been very ill, and so I know he's hoping that everything will work out. So, uh, but listen, it will not disappoint that part in you. It is, it is amazing. So anyway, next week, if that works in your world, love to have you to be a part. Here's a story. Well, Wow. <laughs> And I thought you guys were just listening to your Beyonce. She was bringing up three very... Uh, would you... Yeah, it stops at some point. <laughs> that was my lineup every afternoon. You know, usually like Brady Bunch, Gilligan's Island, Adam's Family, with a ham sandwich locked in my parents' room where my brothers couldn't find me. And we had no media problems back then. <laughs> um, would you let me look at some lovely ladies... And, and I want to say very quickly, I'm sure that they weren't perfect. And actually, Mother's Day is a, kind of a mixed bag because, uh, you know, we realize reality is that sometimes um, you come through a home where your mom was not really a good mom. And it would be absolutely naive for me to think that everyone here just, man, if they, you know, love mom to death, she was there for us. And that's not always the case. I mean, that's a nice Cinderella story. And, and, and hopefully that's more often true than not. But you could be here, and your, your mom was extremely abusive. And you suffer today from it, and you know you do. And I hope to God, God is able to bring healing in, into your life, and maybe through networking with other moms for encouragement, you are going to change the trajectory of that pattern in your life and in your family. Maybe you're here, and your mom is deceased. And honestly, it's a, it's a mix for you, because as much as you... Um, Look forward to that. Maybe grief is just pounding away at you right now. It's, it's like the, uh, the, the person that shows up for lunch and stays for dinner. And depending where you're at in that journey, that could be eating you alive. And, and if you're here and you knew it was Mother's Day, thank you. And I'm praying for God to give you grace and strength um, through that as well. Um, 
maybe you're a mom and, and it really wasn't part of how it all planned and supposed to go, but this is where you're at. Regardless, it is a special day to, to honor moms. And, and I, I feel it's important to honor them, not because Hallmark tells me it's important. To be quite honest with you, I've never seen such an array of sappy cards ever that I hear see these days. I literally am disgusted. I buy one and then I'll just scratch it all out and put what I want to say. Or We, we just edit them. Um, but it is an incredible calling, and I don't think I have to stress that too much for you to recognize that as well. Um, I want you to first consider a protective mom. And you may remember this from back in Exodus chapter 1, that the Hebrews had become enslaved, and the Pharaoh that emerged had no respect for Joseph, no respect for the Hebrews. He saw all these people, and he saw them multiplying and said, you know what, this could be a problem. So what he does is he enslaves him. Look at verse 14 of chapter 1. They made their lives bitter, that's Egyptians, the leadership, with harsh labor in brick and mortar, with all kinds of work in the fields, and all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. It's important that you're getting the, the flavor of what it would like to be to be a parent in this time. So the Egyptians, hey, we're going to just put them and enslave them. That's going to diminish them, demoralize them. But they continued to grow and multiply. And so Pharaoh has a plan B. He calls in two ladies named Shifra and Pua. They're midwives. Midwives who go and help deliver these babies of the Hebrews. And, and, and the Pharaoh just says, basically, here's what you're going to do. You're going to make sure every male that's born is killed. Wipe them out. Can you imagine giving an assignment from, um, from your king, if that's you know, kind of the relationship that they called them that, but basically you follow orders or you die? You know what happened, right? Those midwives went out there, did not do what was said at all. Pharaoh finds out and he summons them back into the, into the courthouse, back into the whatever the palace. Can you imagine being summoned and these two ladies, Shifra and Pua, are walking? What are we going to say, you know? I don't know. I don't know, right? It's kind of a dramatic moment there. It's probably a long hallway. They're getting called in on the carpet for them not doing the job. For what, what happened here? You're supposed to see the population diminish. I love what she said. They said that uh, basically um, whenever we get there, it's too late because these Hebrew women, they pop them out. It's, it's a Hebrew. It's in the Hebrew. You'd have to find it there somewhere. Yeah, that's what they said. I can't imagine. I just see them, you know, Pua saying that and Shifra staring on the side and she's just like, really, that is all you got? <laughs> Under her breath. You can't be ser serious, right? There's this pause, this quietness as the Pharaoh stares at them. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't know. God's favor. But it says that, that the Lord, I love it, verse uh, 17 says, the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. So look what happened in verse 20. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Year after year, delivery after delivery, here's your baby. Here's your baby. Here's your baby. They have no children. They have no baby. And then God says one day, Here's your baby. What an incredible story of these heroic women way back in antiquity. In this same, same time frame, though, we're also introduced as well to Amram and Jochebed. These would be the parents of Moses. If you remember, um, this pharaoh went off the, off the rocker totally now, and so he just says, everyone in Egypt, all Egyptians, if you see a male under two, cast them into the Nile. that have been like for Jochebed to tell her husband after knowing this is the culture, this is the environment, that I'm pregnant. They're already in a terrible environment physically and with harshness and brutality and this horrific thing is occurring and lo and behold, Jochebed is pregnant. You can't imagine, right? I guess we can't because it would be terrible. 
for so for three months, she hit him. <laughs> three months of shh, you know. Three months of not telling anybody about your baby boy. Who could you trust, right? Three months, and the lavender powder isn't working with soothing. Lavender soothes. No, it's not anymore. You know, just this whole thing was exploding, so she's hiding um, Moses around wherever she can. And it says uh, in the text, verse 3 of chapter 2, Exodus, but when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put him among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. You know, you know the story. It's amazing, really. That was a very, very tough, tough call for her. But my goal in seeing this lovely lady um, is that she was protective. She was protective of her baby, of her child, of her son. Moms, that's uh, part of your calling too, right? And obviously these parallel to dads, but it's mom's day. Thank you for being protective. And by the way, I understand we have moms here that are dealing with toddlers, some with teens, some have adult children. But you know, I don't think it changes. Maybe the way you, you protect them changes a little bit. As far as I know, every time your son or your daughter, even as adults, and their heart's broken, your heart breaks, right? It sure does. You protect them in several ways. You uh, protect them uh, through when things get tough, physically, emotionally, relationally. It's not easy. But Jochebed was a protective mom. Can I just say this before we move on? Egypt is still after your kids. I'm going to slow it down a little quieter. I want to make sure that you, you understand what I'm getting at. I'm using Egypt metaphorically here. Egypt is still after your kids. It's an agenda that's being slammed down your throats, my throats, from every sphere, from the classroom to used to be fun, innocent, good kids shows. And they got to put that junk front and center. And they want to make you process it and make you say, this is normal. So protect. Protect your kids. I only got two things really growing in my garden right now. Cherry tomatoes, because I can get them off before they get eaten by bugs. And peppers, you know why that, because I like peppers, right? But you know what? I, I grew them from seeds. It's really important that when you have these little baby seeds emerging, that you kind of protect them. Go throw them out in the middle of the sun, and you watch what happens to your, your little seeds, right? Newt, right? I think that's kind of what we're called to do. And as a mom, you want your kids to hopefully get some roots established, some stability. And there'll come a time when they will need to be able to weather those storms, and the sun gets hot, and Egypt is still chasing. Jacobed. A very lovely lady. She was protective. Hannah, we slide forward a little bit to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 2. We're introduced to a man named Alkanah, and he had two wives, Hannah and Peniah. Verse 2 of chapter 1. He had two wives, Elkanah did. One was called Hannah, the other Peniah. Peniah had children, but Hannah had none. I don't have to be, or you don't have to be a family counselor to know this may not be the best situation for, for, for a healthy family. Two wives. I don't think you have to even go to school for that one. You know what I mean? I think we could all maybe affirm that's not the best. Listen, God never endorsed polygamy. Nowhere do you find it. It's, there are times where it seems to not be addressed straight forward and, and front and center, but God never said this is how you do life. That was more culture speaking, and at times it was a mistake. It always proved to be a mistake with every leader, whether it's a king or just an individual such as Alkanah. Well, we're introduced to this situation. Hannah had no children. Peniah had children. You can imagine animosity and jealousy. Verse 6, 1 Samuel 1. Look what the writer says about Peniah. Her rival... Peniah is not just, you know, someone in the house, the other mom, the other wife. Her, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. 
This went on year after year. And whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival, again, provoked her. But then she'd back off. No, provoked her till she wept and would not eat. By the way, it was a big celebration, one of the few times they could enjoy meat. And she made sure that she just hurt her so bad till she couldn't even eat. Her husband, Elkanah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? I'm sorry, I just had to write the word dunce right over this text. And then, and then, how narcissistic can you be? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? First of all, I don't understand why you're crying, right? And then, by the way, aren't I all that and more to you? You know? You've got to be kidding me. This is a disengaged individual, man. And by the way, it's been going on for what? A couple days? Years. That's another sermon. It's incredible tension. We have some chickens. I think sometimes the chickens have us given the schedule. With, with, oh, my goodness. And we have like three flocks, and that's a whole other story. But anyway, it, if you watch this dynamic, you get a weak hen. The strong hens, man, they're unmerciful to that weak hen. They'll kill it. It's exactly how Benaiah was. Listen. Every woman who cannot, that can bear children does not mean she's a good woman. Just because they can procreate, same for dads, does not mean that you are a good person inside. It's a biological fact. Right? I think they can be redeemed, but this is a really window right to her heart. You know, most, most I would think, most people would, would worry and would be brokenhearted. You see, you already have a wrong framework with the, with the double wives and all that. That's just layer upon layer. A- Hannah makes a vow one day, God, if you bless me with a son, I will make sure I give him to the Lord for here at Shiloh to serve you. And God answers this incredible um, vow, and that's what happens. She's blessed, you know, holding baby Samuel one day, finally in her arms. Her heart is elated, but she knows her vow, Right? So at the appropriate time, this little boy begins serving the Lord as a, a part of his calling through life. But I, I have listed, I've listed Hannah as a supportive mom. Look at verse 18. I've kind of overstepped this through the years. Second, uh, Samuel says in verse 18, Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. And each year, each year, his mother made him a little robe and took it to him. And when she went up with her husband to the other to offer the annual sacrifice. So it said, well, let me continue on. Verse 20, Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife saying, may the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. So evidently, every year during the year, uh, Hannah, I think, would stitch and say a prayer. Stitch and say a prayer all year. It, she could relate, and she was thinking of her son who was serving. It was uh, some distance involved. And then whenever it was time for the annual offering, she had that beautiful little garment, that robe. And by the way, I know it's hard. Like, well, why is that special? Man, I got a clothes full. Clothing was very pricely and rare in that sense then. Do you remember when Jesus was on the cross? What were they doing for his clothes? Snake eyes, right? So... I think that this wasn't a support or a supportive thing. This was something that could involved money. It involved time. It showed love. So thank you, Mom. Supportive. I want to quickly tell a story, and I, I've shared it before, but it is so fitting. And I can maybe thank you for granting me some latitude. I can remember my mom. Um, <clears throat> I remember in high school, at 16 years old, I started taking flying lessons, and I passed my ground school. But I could not get my private ticket till I was at least 17. It was an FAA law. So I began to tell my mom as I'm practicing and learning and studying and, and, and flying dual with the, my other uh, 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 flight instructor that, hey, you're going to be my first passenger. And she would, um, you know, just smile. I think she was like, hope he gets us out of his system real quick or he runs out of money, one of the two. 
Well, the day came. I, I had my 17th birthday. I had my uh, check ride with the FAA examiner and passed. I was so excited. And I had been lining this up. I said, Mom, now listen, you're good. I know you get off at 3. She was at Longwood. Meet me at the airport, St. Louis County. And, and hey, we're going to punch a hole in the sky, right? Excited. You bet, man. You know, without all day, she told me later on that she had prayed all day that somehow this wouldn't work out or something would go, she'd forget. Well, didn't forget. And she showed up and, um, yeah, yeah. She got in this, you know, this little, little plane. It's a 152, two people, three squirrels. So anyway, I, uh, you know, you follow your checklist. You got to do that. So she was really kind of getting, and she was quiet, very, way too quiet, you know. And so she, I remember getting my checklist out. You just follow those procedural, nothing, you know. But she said, are you, I remember, are you reading the instructions? Are you reading the instructions? I said, no, no, it's just, it's just so we don't forget anything. We want to make sure everything's covered. And, we're good. and, I, and she got quiet again. Got clearance, taxied over the active, and, and before you know, we're flying. And she, I don't know, but I feel like her knuckles were, you know, just something like this. I, I don't know. I'm just talking probably a mile a minute. And um, I do remember, honestly, uh, this is something that never forgot. On approach to landing, I remember at some point she goes, don't you need to slow down? I think what happened, I was pointing, I said, the airspeed indicator is over here, and you want to make sure that, you know, you keep a certain glide slope in your airspeed, you're watching that, and, and I think that's when she had said that, because that was like 80 knots or something like that, and anyway, she did that. I, I love you, Tyler and Sophia. I don't think I'm getting in the airplane <laughs> at 17. That's because mom's support... They'll go to bat like that and not just support with, with money and time, but sometimes their life, right? Getting in an airplane. I had a photo of it. Is it still, is it able? There you go. Look, this is, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't have one with her, but that was like right around that time frame. Look, look at that little thing, man. I hardly get on the back of a four-wheeler with my kids. And even then, I'm like, yeah. So just a, a, a little personal illustration. Thanks for, for your, your gratitude in allowing me to, to share that. Um, you have been supporting your parents and oftentimes ways that they don't even understand until later on when they have their own kids. I have to share a woman's random thoughts and speaking in the context of support and the money and the time and the money. If you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it will always be yours. If it doesn't come back, it was never yours to begin with. But if it just sits in your living room, messes up your stuff, eats your, takes your... <laughs> See, I don't find Hallmark cards saying that. <laughs> Someone come up with a line, I don't know. Thank you for letting us mess with your stuff. Thank you for letting us spend money, and thank you for opening the door, and we just thought we'd just sit here for dinner, you know what I mean? So we have a protective mom, mom with Jochebed. Then we have a supportive, lovely lady with Hannah. And this last really doesn't mean a lot of elaboration. It is the loyal mother. Mary is the loyal mother. The phrase that strikes me on this is John 19, 25. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Loyal to the very end. In fact, she was loyal way back whenever she first heard that she was pregnant by supernatural way. And she was loyal even when she heard other ladies whispering about that pregnancy. Oh, it's from God. She was loyal when Joseph said, I love you, but we can't do this. this we're going to need a divorce. She was loyal whenever Jesus would enter public ministry and she watched the religious leaders come at him, accuse him of blasphemy, seek to kill him. She remained loyal. She was loyal whenever two thieves mocked him on the cross. She was loyal her entire life to her son. 
Mom, thank you for being loyal to your kids. When your toddler is having a meltdown because he didn't get in, get in cotton candy because he's already had you know, 14 hot dogs and everything else in the day. Thank you for being loyal when your teen has a terrible, terrible attitude. Thank you for being loyal when your adult child never calls. I heard a joke the other day, money isn't everything, but it sure keeps the kids in touch. <laughs> My take-it-home stuff, if you will, was there are no perfect moms. Just, just to want to remind you of, of that, ladies. I, for the most part, I, I think that probably there's a challenging dynamic that happens between this idea of this ideal world of perfectness and then what what actually is and these incredible unrealistic expectations you you impose probably on yourself and I'm sure it's at times painful there are no perfect moms you have shortcomings and even if you can hide them pretty well you're well aware of them and you are bothered by them the second thought I had here this is not a perfect world your kids will not be perfect your world will not be perfect Christmas cards will not always go out when they're supposed to Laundry, neatly folded in everyone's dresser, maybe sometimes. But it's no problem to tell your kids to get their socks out of the dryer like we all do. Did that ever happen at your house? Oh, I'm sorry. No kidding, I remember, this is true, Sophia. My, I overheard this. Jen was talking to Sophia in her room. Why are you, why don't you put these clothes in the, in the dirty clothes? Why are you around... She goes, Mom, every time I put them in there, I don't get them back for, two, for several days. She was, she was approaching it like it was a service. <laughs> like there's these little, little elves that come in in the middle of the night and do laundry. Psalm 20, 127, verse 2. Thank you for the patience here. We're about wrapping up. 127, verse 2. It is vain. It is vain that you rise up early and, and go late to rest. Eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to his beloved sleep. The third thought I have here is moms, and of course these are all appropriate for dads, for all of us. Reject our toxic secular culture that seeks to diminish and degrade your high calling as a mom. Our culture has at times, not always, at times trivialized being a mom. But apart, honestly, from your relationship with God and your relationship with your spouse, your kids are your next calling in life. And sometimes it is somewhat almost um, belittled. Sometimes I'll take a high road for now. We'll visit it later. <laughs> so here's a story of a, a lovely lady named Jochebed. Be protective. Here's a lovely story of a lady, lovely lady named Hannah. Continue to be supportive. And here's a lovely lady of a story named of a lady named Mary, be loyal. Last thought I have here, if concerning motherhood, if it was going to be easy, it never would have started with something called labor. Thank you, moms, seriously. I want to just close in prayer, and I'm praying for you. And although it's, these are fun dynamics, I'm not sure what everyone goes home to. Not sure of the words that have been said through the years or hurt or misunderstandings, who knows. We're thankful for God's grace, no matter where he finds us, right? Lord, I do pray for each mom here, whether they are dealing with diapers um, or they are taking care of elderly parents. I pray for them to sense in their heart that you have not left them abandoned, they're not trapped, but they are called to serve you in this midst of, of challenging times. And forgive us when we think that that those would never always be a part of life. They are always a part of life. For, forgive us when we think we should be always smooth sailing. But you give us grace, you give us strength, you give us uh, other uh, friends and men and women who can help us with wisdom. May Lakeside and the families represented here be strong. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said,
little cheerio for you. <laughs> cheerio, Pastor. Cheerio. <laughs> well, moms, we love you. Thank you for all you do. Like Pastor Terry was saying, we have a, a little gift for you as you walk out the building. There will be some students there uh, handing that to you, putting that in your hands. Uh, we also want to remind you our food pantry is open as well here in the back of the parking lot. Stop by if you want to be blessed or be a blessing to uh, someone else, maybe in your community. Um, also, as you all know, we have this big event coming up, right, with the Gibbs family. And also we have a Baptism Sunday. So if you have a few minutes to spare, please, uh, to help us with the chairs, I will give instructions as soon as uh, most of the people are uh, walking out. And uh, that would be very helpful for us to have everything set uh, to go for next week. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. Moms, again, thank you for all you do. We love you. Uh, Mom in Mexico, I don't know what camera. I love you, Mom. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed day.